that's all good yeah it's a long time since i've done um for, for for some of my weight loss stuff i used to um do a group session you know but that was probably uh last sort of december so uh it's quite a while ago hey and it changes i mean you they do an update and suddenly you come in it's moved and yeah you know so I, mean, I, do, I do a few zooms mm. and i went into it and the air end and it was just totally different. yeah so Hi, Martin. Are you? Can you hear us, mate? I don't know if you're on. Uh, yes, I can hear. <clears throat> How's it going? Can you hear me? I can, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yes, brilliant. Thank you. We, we're just we're all winging it. Only John <laughs> knows what. He, well, only John knows what he's doing. I, well, got, I, don't, know, well, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> I'll just come in here and buy some paint. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Good at hypnotherapy with shit on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, still a bit early. I mean, uh, you know, like I invited a load of people, so I'm friends with a lot of people within my group, John. Right. So it sent an invite out. And then I was just checking it out today, and it's like all invites, which have people haven't seen, you know, because I'm not friends with them. Yeah. Um, so I was pinging a load away about an hour ago so you know we could have just martin or it could be an influx of uh it's not a problem with people. It. it's not a problem you, you record it and they can they want to and uh yeah it's it's yeah. it's not a problem if you know if it's uh something that people can't even get hold of we can, we can always do it again it yeah is, it is not a problem and and also when i done a poll a lot of people did actually say they would prefer to listen to a recording perhaps when they're working and stuff um you know because also you know you start saying i've got my friend john coming in as a hypnotherapist they're like what the hell's going to happen you know <laughs> they're like they, they don't i know am what not going to make you cluck like a chicken and bark like a dog yeah somebody did well, say hey, Martin. <laughs> there you go <laughs> you know oh, that's a shame <laughs> Is your video work, Martin, or you just want to stay video off? I don't care either way, mate. It's up to you. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing, really. <laughs> um, I'm amazed you can actually hear me, but that's brilliant. Uh, how do I do it? Start with you. Mouse down to the left-hand corner, Martin. Yeah. I've got a little huge. microphone and a little camera. And oh, you yeah. Start video. Hi. Oh, yeah, turn it off. No, no, turn it off. <laughs> That's better. How's it going, Martin? Good, thanks, Gary. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah, so um, we'll start, well, we'll leave it another few minutes and then, um, because I'll... What's your background, Martin? Um, in regards to my career or, yeah. or hypnotherapy? Um, build, I've been in the building trade all my life mainly as a, a bricklayer, but I've just recently started doing painting and decorating, Start, as most people do, with friends and family and, you know, yeah. just word of mouth gets around and yeah, just trying to keep busy. Good. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I really, I wish I'd have done it years ago. I wish. Brick, brick works hard work as you get older. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my brother's a builder and, um, he was moaning about his elbow and then his his left elbow, then his right hand side he had pulled, and he's like, he's what is he, 50, 51, I think. That's the exactly uh, same happened to me, my elbow. Yeah, and he's Ten like tendonitis. Yeah. That's it, yeah. It's not much fun, is it? Bloody painful, mate. Mm. <laughs> Mind you, painting, I, I don't know. You only got to lift a brush up, but it's um <laughs> Whenever, whenever my brother paints with me, he, at the end of each day, he's like, oh, I'm knackered, man. <laughs> it's like different, yeah. different fitness, isn't it? Yes, yeah, I guess so. It's like, it's, it, things are getting easier, though, aren't they? You get, you get sanders and things like that. Easy them when I used to do it years ago, all by hand, you know. It's, yeah. it's just all these Merca sanders and things like that to make like a bit of, and a spraying as well i'd like to get into the spraying side of it yeah that looks good that does look good i must admit i do like look at that mm. i had to go and see a I, I rarely do home visits 
but um, a guy was ha actually having his place decorated, but the back of the house, a very nice house. And when he showed me what he was doing, all the guys who were doing the painting and the ceilings, they was all, they're, they're not using that. They were just doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's quicker. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, really uh, it, it, interesting to watch. But... Especially what you do, Gary, the, the kitchens and things like that. Wouldn't that be quicker? It's playing. It would, but a lot of the companies I work for, they actually request hand painted. So I don't know whether it's something they can tell coffee mums down Costa Coffee, you know, they're like, oh, it's all hand painted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's bloody so time consuming. Good. Yeah. It is when you see these guys spray them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the hardest bit about spraying is taping it all up, isn't it? It's hilarious when you see them all the taping, all the paper and all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, we've got Jordan joining. Um, so Jordan works for Colour Supplies, which is our group sponsor. And he's like a, a paint geek <laughs> with regards <laughs> to products. <laughs> um but hold on, is he? Oh, he's gone. We'll just see if we can get um, Jordan to come in and then we're, we'll start, John, do you reckon? Yeah, that's no problem. Oh, let's see what he's saying. Where are you based, Martin? Warwickshire. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to get... Um, <clears throat> Near Leamington Spire, uh, Warwick. Some sort of database where we can all connect you know uk wide um because like you say stuff like spraying I, i've hooked up with a couple of people who just specialize it, have done it for years and then any spray stuff i just get them in to do it oh do you rather than you training myself to do it you know right just, do they do they charge a lot more than what you would do to do it or um it about the same yeah well it just depends on the job really but you know yeah. just, you just put a bit on the top and um make some money you know it's just another way of making money yeah right let's find out what's happening with jordan and then we'll get going two seconds guys this is a filter well martin if you're the only one attending you're going to get a get a special prize i reckon <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, like, you know, I don't know Facebook groups like you know, John. Sometimes it's only a small percentage that see it. Yeah. Um, you think you're sending it to a load of people, and I'm yeah, it. yeah, it's really, you know, this is like the first one we're doing. Um, so what you, I think, ideally going forward is build up a an email database. Yeah, yeah, and then just do a, you know go. You know, Go through, you know, Mailchimp, and just do a mass email to say that's what you've got coming up. Yeah, because there is absolutely no guarantee. You know, with Facebook with their algorithm, you just yeah. don't know where it's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all part of what I'm setting up at the moment, but it's sort of grown quite quickly, and um, yeah. yeah, you know, it's just getting it all in place, so it's all automated. So um, yeah, definitely. Let me just check in my group to see if anyone's struggling to get in, and if not, we will get cracking. Yeah. We'll have to remember to cut out this first bit. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. I'm sure Jordan will join us. Um, All right. So let's get going. <clears throat> so welcome, John and Martin. Um, so when I set up this painter's group originally, because I did hypnotherapy or studied hypnotherapy and qualified five years ago. Um, it was something that helped me immensely in a very short period of time when I, when I saw a cognitive hypnotherapist. And she sort of, you know, I was always into it, always into reading up on stuff and how your mind works and all the rest of it. And she said, oh, you should train to become one. So, which I did, and I still see clients now and again. But what I've realized is, people like John are proper experts <laughs> and um, you know I, I really love doing it but there's so many people amazing people like John who are just so fantastic 
And when I set up the Painters Group originally, it was about kind of mental health and, you know, helping people because I know how stressful it can be running a painting business. And um, yeah, we've grown the group enough now where I feel, you know, we need to introduce it to, to help people um, because, you know, even you, John, you know, you're self-employed, running a business is stressful. Definitely. And for painters, you know, not getting paid, um, overload of work, taking too much on, you know, you don't get paid when you're on holiday, you know, it's a constant kind of 24 seven worry. Yeah. But what we were going to talk about tonight, John, is how, you know, we have all these programs and beliefs and systems in our subconscious, which can jeopardize us sometimes. Mm. And, you know, we can have a problem client, say from five years ago, but perhaps, um, and you said it, John, tarnish all customers with the same brush, you know, yeah. and, um, it's not necessarily true. It's just our subconscious beliefs and programs which are running in our brain, which can really jeopardize us. So, you know, I reached out to you and you kindly said, yes, you're the first guest speaker for us um, in the group. I know it's going to help people immensely. And um, yeah, you said earlier, I hope you got a load of questions. I'm like, no, I, <laughs> I'm just going to wing it. I ain't got a clue. Um, so you were going to- works out the best to be honest. Yeah, exactly. You know, and you were just going to come on and talk about how, you know, certain stuff, if we've got problems at home or we're stressed or all the rest of it, we can turn up at clients' houses and it can actually show, you know, in us physiology and all the rest of it. You know, and it's, you're going to talk about how we can kind of get out of our van and meet and greet people like leave it leave it in the van leave it at home yeah, Don't, yeah. you know you can't afford to take yeah. it into that client that's and that's yeah that's what i want to that's the message i really want to get across to people because you know like i'm saying running our own business it's it is extremely tough and we do our best each and every time but even we know that our best isn't always good enough for some person and that person usually is the one that doesn't really want to pay or wants to get something off and is going to you know twist anything that you try to do and even if you go ex extra mile you bend over backwards which you're normally doing it's your own business they are going to bring it back to them their their problem yeah. so we've got a You've got to go in there with a fresh mind. You've got to go in there that, you know, with a, those hundreds and thousands of customers behind you that have praised your work, that have given you recommendations and everything else, not that one customer or that, you know, half a dozen that moaned, that whinged, because they are just moaners. They are just whingers. That's what we've got to do. Yeah. But the reason we go in there feeling like that is because what happens our unconscious mind, our, to break it down, we've got 95%, which is our unconscious mind, and we've got 5%, which is our conscious mind. But the conscious mind, well, that's like a little four-year-old running around in your head. It's They've both got the, the intention of doing the best for you, but they do it in very different ways. The unconscious mind is always going to keep you safe. It's going to keep you happy. But if you've got a little bit of doubt in your mind, it is going to accelerate it. It is going to do, you might turn up, you know, you could turn up to a job, you could get out of your van and you could feel absolutely wonderful and you walk up and it's got a brown front door and your mood changes. And I go, what the hell? And you don't know. And suddenly what it is, is that one time you went and done a job and you might have spilt some pain. You might have had a complaint. You might have kicked the dog, whatever. They had a brown front door. Your unconscious mind goes, oh, do you remember last time this happened? And it all comes back. Doesn't mean to, but it does. It just reminds you because when it first happened, and it could have been your first job as an apprentice even, when it first happened, it tried to protect you. You know, you might have got told off by the boss and you were sent home, I think, oh, and you, you know, you got out of there. So the unconscious mind done its job. It got you out of a, set, a situation that was making you feel anxious, that was making you feel angry or frustrated or whatever. But the way it protected you then, and you might have been 16 back then, it protected you in that way, and it's carried on protecting you in that same way, day after day, because it worked then. 
what it doesn't see is the bigger picture that well actually i'm now the boss of the company i'm now doing this and all i can do you know i can do those jobs blindfolded it doesn't realize that you've moved on quite so much it just knows that oh, the last time you had a brown front door you had a that's this is what happened and it keeps protecting you it's it is the old fight or flight mentalism that you know that's what goes on and that comes back down to you know the, the good old cavemen and you know basically you know there's one caveman he went out year after year to this same water pool and he washed himself he got water for his family blah 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 and then one day he went there and there was a saber-toothed tiger on the other side looking at him and suddenly <gasps> he's in danger he runs away he forgets that he's been going there for the last 20 years and never seen anything. But that one time is now locked in. So he doesn't go to that water hole anymore. He's got to go miles. He goes to another water hole because he can't go back. He can't do that. You know, I had uh, one of my clients um, was within my first year, I think. He was a pilot. He was a commercial pilot, but retired. And he came to me because he took his he bought a light aircraft and he took it up and he took it up in the wind and he knew he shouldn't have taken it up and as he was coming down he, he realized that the wind was getting a bit too strong so he thought now i'm going to go down i'm going to go down safely and as he was about to touch down freak gust of wind literally freak and it flipped him but he walked away it wasn't a problem he got out and he went okay not a problem he got a phone call a couple of days later from the insurance company could they meet him at the aerodrome just so they can go over the details yep no problem he left his house got in his car went down to the end of his road went to turn left and he froze he lost it he started shaking and he started lit physically you know crying he went back home phoned the guy up said i can't make it this has happened they said, okay, we'll reschedule. They rescheduled. The same thing happened. He went down the road, he turned left. So he came to me and said, I don't know what's going on. And I said to him, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to drive to the airport tomorrow from your house, but I don't want you to turn left. I want you to turn right. He said, but that's a longer way. I said, I know, but go right. Don't go your usual way. Okay. And he went out and got out and did it. And he got all the way to the edge field until he saw that wind sock. And then he lost it again because the unconscious mind kicked in. Last time you was here, you nearly died. You walked away, but you nearly died because it was all going, all going through his mind. And that's what our unconscious mind does all the time. But we can override it. And that's what I want to offer you tonight because my biggest belief in all that I've ever done is people by people and if you when you go to price a job you know yeah it's great when you get recommendations and everything else but if those people don't gel with you they don't like you you know they're not going to invite you into their home and let you do you know their decorating to their specification but if you turn up on that door and you've had a row with the wife or you happen to be in a road where the neighbours down the road, they either booked you and then let you down or they didn't pay or whatever, you are going to remember it. You are going to feel it and you are going to show that to that person that opens that door. You won't mean to, but it will be there. It is seen straight away. So we can combat that because as brilliant as our unconscious mind is or our brain is, we can't handle two emotions at one time. So we can't be angry, frustrated or annoyed or anything, you know, and calm. It's impossible. And the interesting thing is, is that anger, fear, phobias, all those type of things, they meet in the stomach. There are a series of emotions that all get together and say, right, we have got to get out of this situation. How are we going to do it? And they have a bit of a chat and they go, right, well, last time we done it, you know, gave them wobbly legs and that made them leave and go home or give them sweaty palms or 
Yeah, you know, let's raise their heart because that make them think they're going to have a heart attack and they won't bother going in. When that doesn't work, they then ramp it up a little bit. You then start sweating externally or you get flushed. And the reason it's doing that is because it wants someone else to say to them, oh, you don't look well. Are you OK? And they go, no, I'm not OK. I'm going to have to go home. They've got their ticket out of there. But while they're meeting in the stomach and you start to feel it, you, you know, you start to feel it coming because sadly we don't realise it, but we are turning up that heart rate. We're turning up the sweats. We're turning up the, the sweaty palms because we start focusing on them. So we have to use an anchor. Now, what you have to do is you create an image in your mind, an image of a time when you, you may have done an absolutely fantastic job. Could be in a two up, two down. It could have been in a mansion. But there is always going to be a job where you felt absolutely fantastic. You were really proud of it. You have got to relive that job. You live that job and you get in that job and you go back there and you stand back in that job and you look at it and you turn up the colours, you turn up the sounds, the smells and everything. And you make it so real because when you make it and you think about it, your brain very quickly makes that picture. Go, oh, I remember that. Oh, that was great. That was, you know, you hear the words of praise. You can put those even if it's after, you know, you can be standing in, let's say, for, say, you know, in that kitchen but here, the words of prayer, oh, I've done a fantastic job. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. That was brilliant. You turn everything up, the sounds, the smell, even the, the smell of the paint. But as you do that, you start to feel good. You start to remember just how good you are at what you do. And the trick of it is, and you can, you can try it now, if you're, you know, if you're listening to this, as long as you're not driving or in, with machinery. Or painting. Or painting, no, that is on stilts. Yeah. <laughs> Wait until your feet firm on the floor, sitting in a comfortable chair or laying down, whatever. What I want you to do is just, and we're not doing any trance work, don't, don't worry, you're not going to bust into song when Kylie Minogue comes on the radio tomorrow. Actually, Gary, we might do that for you. <laughs> no, we won't. Right. You see me work. <laughs> <laughs> just close your eyes just for a moment. And think about a time. It doesn't, you know, it, it may be a job that you was on. It may just be family time or a time. Doesn't matter when. But get that time in your head. And as you think of that time, I want you to imagine that you've got a remote control in your hand. And then turn everything up. Turn the sounds up so loud. Turn the colours up so they're really vivid. Imagine there's a button to turn the smells up even relive that time when you felt really confident, when you felt really good about yourself, your capabilities. You just had all that confidence inside of you. And when you feel it is at its very peak, when you feel it is at the most, I want you just to take a deep breath. And as you do, pinch together your finger and thumb like the OK sign of your dominant hand. Just Pinch together that finger and thumb when you think it is at that. Keep thinking you're in that area, wherever it is for you. It doesn't matter where it is. You might just want to be on a beach somewhere so that you're really nice and calm. It doesn't matter. Just turn up the sights, the sounds, the textures. When it's at its peak, take a deep breath. Pinch together your finger and thumb. Take another breath. And then release your finger and thumb and open your eyes. Now, what we've done there... We've created an anchor, an anchor that's going to come from the mind. And you can practice on doing it so you can make it even more real. But at any time, if you start to feel a bit stressed, a bit worried and about anything, it doesn't have to be to do with painting. It could just be, it could be a trouble at home, trouble with the kids, whatever. If you need to calm down, you take that breath and you pinch together that finger and thumb, your brain will automatically go back to that anchor and you will calm down because all those earlier feelings that anxiety that worry that frustration that was you you were turning it up because you started thinking about it it put the thought there it planted that thought into your mind but then you started everything racing 
even another simple trick to do is when you are going out to price jobs, which is usually when that first client is going to see you. Yep, you may have been recommended, but they've never met you. And, you know, they might have totally different tastes of that person that recommended you. So you've got to set a good impression. On that way to that job, just make get a habit of having, if you've got a CD player where you stream your music in your car, a piece of music that really makes you smile, a piece of music that can just turn your mood around. It could be something that you heard at the school disco many years ago, and it just brings back good memories, the first girlfriend, the first kiss or whatever. Just something that can change your mood for the better. And if at any time, whether you, you know, you might go in to do a job or you might be called to a job where they want to complain. Now, if you're going into a job where they want to complain, you already go with your guard up. You already go and it may come across a bit aggressive. You don't mean to, but you're already on the back foot because you're expecting it. But you could walk in there and it could be the smallest complaint. It may not even be of something that you've actually done, but they're just whinging or whatever. You've got to go in there, non-committal at all, and go, what's the problem? You know, what, what are we dealing with here? But to do that, you have got to be, as you knock on that door, you have got to be calm. If for any reason there's something you haven't got, you know, the music available or anything else, you can sit in that van, that car, whatever, whatever you've taken, that vehicle, and when you pull up outside, just before you go in, you again, you take a deep breath. A deep breath is everything that you need. That will clear and calm you down. And as you do that, hold on to that steering wheel. Squeeze that steering wheel as if you're squeezing the life out of it. Because what you're doing, you're sending all your anger, all your frustration down into that steering wheel. From your hands. It's like when people come to me for anger management, it all goes down to that fist, but what they don't do, all the anger is in that fist, and then they go and hit someone. What I teach them to do is, well, we calm down the anger, but if that anger does get down to that hand, before you raise it in, you know, in aggression, you throw it away, you just let it go. You can do it behind your back so they don't see the fist falling, but you let it go, because all it's looking for, anxiety, anger, fear, it is looking for a way out of your body. It doesn't care how it gets out, but if you just literally, you put yourself in control of it and you, you know, go, oh, oh, I could really hit it. Yeah, bang. Just throw it away. That means you are then back in control. You have got to bite your tongue. We know that because we know as, you know, business owners, we know that one bad review can undo all the good work that you have done because people are very quick to read and remember bad reviews rather than all the good ones. So you do have to bite your lip. You might want to say something, but you know that you really can't afford to. And you've got to get across that to your lads. You know, some of you most probably have got apprentices working for you who don't have that same moral standards as you. And they're going to say something or they're going to smoke in someone's house where they shouldn't or something like that you have got to show them the qualities that you want and how to deal with it because it is it is about people buying people and if you you know you've got to think you've got to look at yourself because it does all start with you and you've got to think you know think of a job where you did turn up where you had already you prejudged something or you know perhaps it's a job that you really didn't particularly want because so-and-so was a neighbor or they, you know that they're whingers or whatever but we can't afford to turn work away nowadays so you go there if you go in there with that preconception they're going to see it so you have got to go in and you've got to look at yourself and think to yourself you know would i employ this guy would i let him and his team come into my home and you know disrupt my home because if you wouldn't employ you, if you wouldn't give you the job, why would you expect strangers to? Mm. <clears throat> I think as well, John, like with problem clients, you know, the same with what you've said about us in the past, having a job where it's gone tits up or whatever, yeah. they may, may well have had tradesmen in and they tarnish us with the same brush. 
Yeah. So it works both ways, doesn't it? Oh, it, it, it certainly does. But it's that old adage, isn't it? You know, they say, oh, the customer's always right. We know <laughs> as a business, we know that they're not. A lot of the time, yeah. you know, they really don't. You know, you're professional in your, I'm professional in mine. But they are, there's always people out there who think that they know better. Mm. And that, that is where you, that is what you've got to change. That is where you've got to, and what you can't afford to do, you know, if you're on the job, let's say the job's three or four days. If you have a bad day on that job, you can't take that bad day into the next day and the next day. Otherwise, it's four days of hell. Yeah. And actually, you didn't have a bad day. You had a bad five minutes that you extended the whole day. Yeah. And then it's going to continue doing it because it annoyed you. So your unconscious mind goes, oh, he's upset. He's annoyed. You know, he goes, he don't like this. So it's going to give you all the reasons on why you shouldn't be there or what you should be doing. You know, and you go, okay, well, if I rush it, I'll get out of here quicker. If you rush it, you're not going to do a professional job. Yeah. You have to <clears throat> maintain your professional standards at all times. So you have to, as soon as, you know, if you are being tarnished with the same brush as we say and everything, you've got to let it go. You've got to take and just, you've got to be able to brush it off. Yeah. Because otherwise it will, it will stay in there. Our unconscious mind holds on to everything that you have ever seen, felt, smelt and touched from the moment you was conceived to present day. Yeah. So I liken it because when I'm in my teaching days, I was a computer teacher. I liken it. Our minds is like a computer. And if you imagine when you use your computer or your tablet, all the tabs that are open, you know, all those little icons on your screen, that pro those programs are already a third open because they're the ones that you use the most. So the computer thinks it's doing you a favor. I'm putting them up on here because when you click on it, I can open up that much quicker. All the tabs at the bottom, all the Googles, all the news, all the things, they're all open. So you imagine how many tabs you've got open in your brain. All the stuff that you haven't let go of. And it, the triggers, you don't know when, you know, when they're going to come out. And I have, I worked with a painter and decorator once, and he was on a fantastic job. He loved the people that he was going to do the work for. They were supplying the paint, but it was, he told them where to get it. And that was absolutely fine. He went into the job. It worked it all out, done everything. He went in there and he opened the tin of paint and the, the colour hit him like a brick in the face because it was a colour that he'd done that this guy ripped him off for thousands. That poor couple, you know, they didn't know what hit them sort of thing because he went from lovely Mr. Nice Guy to a ball of anger, you know, and luckily he came to me and, you know, then I said, well, you know, yep, we can sort it. That's no problem. But you've got to go in and you've got to apologise to those people. You tell them, tell them the story, tell them what happened. You know, they will understand. But that's what happens. It, it happens so quickly. And you just don't know when it will happen. So you have to be able to learn how to control your mood, your unconscious mood. You, you've got to take control of that mood. Otherwise, if you let it control you, it will, it will get out of hand. And so that's what we do. And you know, the other thing that you have to learn, in, especially in your trade as well, is look for a solution, not the problem. If you go into somewhere and, you know, You've done a lovely job the day before and then you've gone back, but, you know, the owners of the house have been going around with a bloody magnifying glass looking for something. And da, 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 da. When they point it out to you, you know, our instinct is go, are you joking? Look, it's, you know, da, 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 da. but to them, it's a problem and they're paying your wages. They're paying your bill. So you don't look at the problem. The problem's already happened. What you sell is it for a solution. Oh, okay, we can we can do that. You know, we can replace that strip or we can sand that down and we can do that. You've got to find the solution straight away. You know, if the problem is again one of the lads, you know, perhaps he's perhaps he's you know <clears throat> on the phone too much, or perhaps he's a bit, you know, a bit too verbal for the light owners of the house. Well, you don't go out full bad, you've just got to say to the lad, okay, you know, 
look, you're in someone's house, please respect their wishes. Can we keep the donor or you know, stay off your phone? I'm paying you to do this. This is what's done. You find a solution to the problem. And that's a good point, John. You know, like you say, I've, I've invited you into my group, but it's like you've been in for months. You know, we often see like, people going to jobs and there's post-it notes everywhere and it's like what the hell you know and it gets you back up but what it is like you say you're unconscious this pattern matched it to a job in the past it might have been 10 years ago where you lost some money it may not have happened for 10 years but straight away it would take you back to that particular moment in time get you back up fight or flight will kick in you know and like you say it's just it, you need to look for a solution because it does happen frequently. You know, you see it all the time in groups where people, you know, either complain about little discrepancies or there's tons of furniture in the way. And it's like, what the hell, how am I supposed to paint? Yeah. But you may not have had a job that was, was as bad as that for maybe two years, you know, but it will bring up memories yep. and, you know, spike your anger. And what's interesting is, you know, I'm just going to let in Beverly. Um, what's interesting is the way our unconscious works as well is you just sometimes, like you say, you can go into a rage or be upset or whatever, but you just don't know what it relates to, no. you know, because there's millions, millions of memories from our lifetime, isn't there? That's why, I mean, I, my strength is in what's called content free hypnotherapy. Yeah. So when people come to me, nine times out of ten the problem that they come to me with is never the problem that is just the last one because our minds are like a bucket under a dripping tap and the last thing that set them over the edge they're saying that's my problem and everything else but it's not it was the one drip that literally overflowed that that bucket mm -hmm. so as you say we don't know what sets us off and how it sets us off but it will do it it's human nature that's how it does it but if you go in there looking for that solution and go, yeah, you know, we can solve that. You will have a better, you know, you'll have a better attitude in walking into that. They'll appreciate it because, you know, working in that trade, there are always going to be people who's going to do the post-it note jobbies. You know, they are going to do it. But they are also usually, if you handle it right, <coughs> they are the people that then recommend you and they're really pleased because of what you did do. Because they think, oh, yeah, well, you followed all my instructions. No, you didn't. You took it on board, but you don't. You do that anyway. You know, oh, yeah, well, I was going to paint that. That's absolutely fine. Or that was going to be gloss. That wasn't going to be matte, whatever. But they think they've taken control. Yeah. It is looking, you've got to focus on what you want, not what you don't want. And that's in, you know, not just in the industry, but it's also in life as well. Because... You know, I, I do it when I do my pre-talks here with my clients. Two skiers at the top of a slalom ramp. There's a professional skier and then there's a dad who's going to show off to his kids. The dad is looking down that ramp and go, oh, look at those trees, look at those rocks. Oh, God, I gotta hope I don't hit them, I hope I don't go into them. The professional skier is standing up there looking, I've got to get from here down to there the quickest way and that path there is the quickest way to do it. He doesn't even look at the trees, he doesn't look at the rocks. That is the fastest way. And that's what we need to do in life. We focus on what we want. And with you guys, what you want is to give your customer the best job that you can possibly do, because if they like what you do, they're going to recommend you. They're going to pay your wages and everything else. So ultimately, whether they're complainers, whingers or whatever, you have both got the same aim. You want to do the very best for them for your business and for their home. So you just have to find that solution. So you just think, okay, I have got to find a solution. And in most cases, you know, it's an easily found solution. But when you get annoyed, when you start seeing red, that solution gets pushed further and further back. Yeah. Um, got a question for you, John. So yeah. as you know, life um, it's not always a fairy tale. Stuff happens, you know. Um, and a lot of decorators, you know, post where they can be on a job and stuff's going on at home or wherever it may be. Or maybe they've just, I don't know, fallen out of love with decorating. And 
it can't be the particular job you're on, can it? You know, it's going to be some kind of memory. Yeah. So it's like, what would you suggest? Because what what prompted me was when you were doing some, you know, NLP about anchoring and stuff, which I love. Yeah. You know, I and I forget from my training how you could perhaps use it if you're having a day where you're on a bit of a downer and you can't be asked and not feeling it. Yeah. You could use the same process of oh. anchoring a feeling for when yeah. you did feel good. And it's all about repetition, isn't it? So when you kind of anchor it, you can keep practicing and stacking it so you can feel good in whatever situation. The e- the easiest way, you know, that that thing anchor that I'd done earlier, and you know, that is a great one because it's a real instant and it, it feels it. But what you do, you know, if you think you've still got another three fingers on that hand. You can have different anchors on different. So you know, if you you want, you know, as I say, if you're going, in, let's 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 take that as an example that you are falling out of love with it, and you're actually thinking, well, do I change careers? Do I change paths? You're doing that because what you're going through is all the rough jobs that you've had, all the jobs that really didn't do. It. It's not because you're falling out of love. It's just that you've got a bit fed up with it. You got into a bit of a rut with it. So if you feel that you're doing that, but you obviously, you need to, you know, you need a job, you need the money, you need, you, know, you want to please the customer. So you put the very best job on one finger. If it's a home, you know, if it's a, a situation at home, so, you know, you've walked out and you're in a bad mood because the wife has been on you or the husband's been at you again and everything else, then, you know, choose somewhere else, a nice lonely beach. It doesn't have to be, you know, have another beach on another finger. Different thoughts because it is about our focus you know and and to put that into perspective not it doesn't link in with what you guys do but the little lad playing in the garden and he falls over and he breaks his arm he screams mum and dad run out mum puts a, a sling on him and gets it into a comfortable position he's still screaming they get him in the car, they take him to hospital. He's still screaming. They see the nurse, they see the doctor, he goes, oh, I think it's broken, let's go and have an x-ray. He's still screaming. They go, yeah, it's broken. Let's go and put a plaster on it and we'll see you in six to eight weeks. He comes out of that plaster room, beaming, smiling. Nothing has changed other than his focus. It's in exactly the same position that mum or dad got it into in the garden, in the sling. But in his mind, oh, I've got to say, you know, he'll come out and say, mum, Simon, Simon Cast or dad, I'm, I'm going to school tomorrow, it's going to get built. Nothing has changed other than him focusing. So if you walk into your jobs focusing on all the bad jobs that you've done instead of all the good ones, you're going to be moody. You're going to, you, know, you are not going to do a great job because when you're cutting in, you know, on the, on the skirting boards, you're going to go, oh, you know, last time I did this, that old Mr. Brown, he really moaned at me. He really had a go at me. And then suddenly you go, you overthink it. And as soon as you start overthinking it, that's when you make mistakes. That's when, oh, bloody hell, there's a drip or it's gone on the wallpaper or whatever. Whereas if you had just gone, do you know what? I'm thinking of that, you know, all those ones that I've done, those hundreds that I've done. Yeah, bang, and you're away. It's like our, our feelings, or the unconscious, but it's same as what we do, you know, with painting. It's all unconscious, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You've done it so long, you just do it. You just do it. And you you will do it. And it's, you know, our, mind, our unconscious mind, that 95% is brilliant. And it has got your best intentions. But what it does, it creates habits. Good habits in a lot of cases and sometimes bad habits. You know, when I deal with smokers, it's I have to deal with that part of the unconscious mind that has created the smoking habit. Because if you don't get that part to do another job of its choosing, it's always going to be there. That's why you hear of people, oh, yeah, well, I stopped for six months and then someone opened a packet of fags or was out in and I started smoking. Yes, because that part that made you a smoker still wants to smoke, still thinks it's doing you a favour. And because you haven't given it a job to do, it's there, sitting on your shoulder, just waiting. It will whisper to you, go on, have, have a fag. One's not going to hurt. If you think about it, you know, most of us on here drive. 
when we first got into the cars, whether it was with dad or the instructor or whatever, we all said, oh, what pedal do I push? When do I change gear? How many revs have I got to get them? And everything else. And then you had a few lessons and suddenly you got more and more used to it and then you could drive. So you had a habit of driving. Now, that part of you that learned to drive is a driver and it's in you. You could go and get in anybody's car now and drive it because you've got that habit. If you learned to swim when you was nine or 10 and you haven't swam in 15, 20 years, if, God forbid, that you know one of your kids or someone you knew fell into water or you fell into water, you would be able to swim because that part's created a habit. And what happens, we can create habits in a very short space of time. So if you, you know, so slow, if you have one bad job in the beginning of the week, that week's going to be crap because you're going to take that bad job into the next one and into the next one. Because all you're going to focus on is what went wrong with that first one. And you're going to keep reliving it. It's going to keep happening. So you have got to take back control of it and go, do you know what? Each time it's always a fresh, fresh client, fresh customer. Just because they've got the same paint or the same front door or whatever, they are not Mr. Smith. You know, they are, they are new people who I'm going to show them just how good I am. And it is, it's, it is, it is down to that unconscious mind. It, it, it is doing us a favour. It is trying to keep us happy and safe, but in the wrong way. It's doing it in a way that worked many, many years ago, and it's carried on doing it. The thing about our brain, as brilliant as it is as well, cannot tell the difference between real and imaginary. And if you think about that, you know, these virtual reality goggles that the kids wear. My son, if my son wants to wind me up, I've got a desk outside this room. If he wants to wind me up, he will put an app in these virtual reality. And I, I don't like um, roller coasters. He will put a roller coaster on it. He will slip it over my head and I will sit there and I will wave and, and I, will, I will feel queasy if I don't get it off quick enough. But my brain doesn't go, well, hang on a minute, you was at your desk a second ago, now you're in Las Vegas on a roller coaster. What it sees, uh, it believes. So get, you have got to believe that you are... I get the... Sorry. Yeah. I said I get the, the overthinking. I, yeah. I, do that, I do that quite a lot. I was... By an old boss of mine, used to come around and say, is that all you've done? Yeah, and you start feeling that guilt. Yeah. Have I done enough? Mm. So you start rushing and then... And then I start worrying that I haven't done things quick enough. Yeah. So, but what, you, I, what you've got to think, Martin, is like those things that I'm overthinking. If you actually look back at the things that you've overthought, whether it's to do with work, at home, or, or whatever, how many of them have actually happened or come true? Yeah. Very little, if any at all. When we worry, we worry about things that we can't control. You know, your customer might come up to you and say, oh, yeah, well, when my neighbour had this one done, they couldn't get that corner right or that, that cut in right and everything else. And suddenly you'll start you'll be thinking about that. Oh, God, I'm going to have to really focus on that. And yeah. you know, whereas actually, no, if they hadn't have said anything, you would have just done what you do best and gone in and done do yeah. whatever's needed. So that's what you've got to do. You've got to, you know, if anyone, you know, let's let's say you walk into a job and they've left, they've left you a, a list of, they want this, 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 and this. And you, you, you scan the list, you look at the list and go, yeah, that's fine. You're still going to do it your way. You are still going to do it your way because you know you've been doing it for years. Your way is the best. You look on board, you go, yep, yeah, that's that's all achievable. That's, that's absolutely fine. So you don't worry about it. You just do it. That worry, that what they wrote down, that's their problem, not your problem. So if it's not your problem, you don't worry about it. You let it go. And again, you know, our, our mind works in pictures so much better than it does in words. And, you know, to prove what, you know, how many times have you watched a film at home? You see an actor on it and you go, oh, what's he been here? Oh, I know him from something. The more you think about it, it doesn't come. But you've seen him. You've acted, you know, he was acting in it and everything else, but you can't, you can't see it. As soon as you stop forgetting thinking about it, you know, you go out and make a cup of tea or something, bang, it comes back up to you. But you saw his face, you knew you knew him. So if that's the case, you can imagine, if, any, if you do get a load of worries, if you get a 
just imagine, you know, go into fantasy land from it. Just imagine it, you know, like a, a black cloud over it. You just go, oh, piss off, <laughs> you know, let it go. Just release it. That's what you've got. To do. You've got to let it go. You know, if you've got a hobby, if you're a golfer, imagine that their issues, their problems, that note, those post-it notes that they've put in, that's on that tree. Bang, whack it with your, give it the best shot that you have ever shot. If you're, you know, if you're a football fan, imagine that you're on the, you know, hello turf of whatever team you support and you're, you're going to kick that ball because that ball is full of all those worries. You're telling your mind you don't want it, you don't need it. And you just do it just for a split second. You just let it out. It just releases it. And in doing that, once you know, once your mind knows that you don't want it, it will do its best. It won't let so many in. That's that's the key to it. Not letting them into your head because if they get in the head, they will take root, and then they will stay there until you least expect it, and then it will turn up and it, you'll turn up on another job in your cases you know and then you oh actually no I haven't so then you have to over you start overthinking it because it's not exactly the same problem that's the Any, that's the key john isn't it sorry to interrupt um <clears throat> you know 95 percent unconscious you know every single day and that's why it overtakes us whereas you know the five percent conscious part of our brain that's what you're talking about, isn't it? Because ultimately, we are in control of our lives. We need to consciously take control. And one of those, you know, the worries and the 95% unconscious worries, they like say, is just kick it into touch and get rid of it. Get, get rid of it. Just do it, you know, visualise it and just get rid of it. Because if you don't let it in, it's not going to take root. And the other thing is that wherever there is a negative, there is always a positive. There's always yin and yang, happy, sad, always. You just have to look for the positive of the negatives that perhaps your customer or your client or perspective, you know, what they're bringing to you. You know, they might say something and you go, oh, yeah. But if you do that, you do know that you're going to lose, you know, X amount, you know, so if the builders are in here, you know, oh, yeah, well, I want that brick wall, da, 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 yeah, but, you know, you look for the positive. You give them, the oh, okay, I hadn't thought of that. Bang, you're the expert. You've, you've taken back control. There is quick, always a flip side. Quick question, John, before um, we speak to Martin direct, just to see if he's got any more questions, but it's just something that comes to mind, you know, looking yeah. through my group and stuff. Um, a lot of people, decorators, do have anxiety. So say they've got to do a, a papered feature wall the next day, they literally have anxiety about it or yeah. finish a job and walk away and they're like, oh, was it good enough? Now, also, I think it's important to, to explain that it's just a belief system about themselves, isn't it? It's not about their skill, their decorating, you know, so it's just one of the belief systems, unconscious belief systems, which could have been installed, you know, from a young age. And it's nothing to do with anybody's ability, right? I deal with a lot of people who come to me and when they actually, when we do any trance work, it usually comes back to teachers. And they didn't do it intentionally, but they did, you know, in the old days, you could go, oh, that's a bit stupid, isn't it? That's been a bit silly. They hear the word stupid, oh, I'm stupid. Yeah? And if you hear that enough, you start to believe it. But some people who try to motivate you, try to drive you on, they do it in the wrong way. A bit like Martin's boss there, who were going, Oh, is that all you've done? You could have done better. He's had that said to him at some point when he was known, and that's what he's carried on as he, in his foremanship type job. Yeah. Where actually, you would, you know, if you think about it, yeah, that's all I've done. But look at the quality of it. That that is great. You know, I don't rush. I do a, you know, a professional job. Yeah. So you you, you come back and go, oh, okay, fair enough. It's that inner voice. You know, it could be sometimes parents. Parents do it all the time. We don't mean to. But we do it all the time. And if you do it, you know, if you're there painting and, you know, you know let's, let's say you haven't mixed the paint well or the drip, it drips off the, the brush, should be non-driven, it doesn't, you know, and you go, oh, you silly git. You call yourself that enough time, your unconscious mind's going to go, oh, he wants to be silly git. He is a silly git. That's it. You do it, you know. You do it enough, call yourself enough times, 
you are going to believe it. And everybody, people with anxiety, if they have got that anxiety, it starts with you. You have got to release it. You've got to take back control because anxiety is the fear of the future. And that hasn't happened yet. The only thing that we can control is the here and now past. That's done. If you made mistakes, you've learned from them. If they weren't your mistakes, well, you don't need to worry about them. And even when we think about past memories, they're not exactly as they were because you've attached an emotion to it. You know, you may have done a great job. Brilliant. That's a great one. Or someone may have moaned. You don't know. So you've attached that memory. So suddenly you've created this memory that isn't 100% yours anymore. The only thing that you can control is the here and now. So, you know, the job that you're going to go to tomorrow. Doesn't matter if you've done a great job the day before. Doesn't matter if you've done a bad job, you know, last week. That job is a whole new job. And you know that you are a professional tradesman and you are going to do your best. Because one thing, your best is always good enough. Doesn't matter what anyone ever tells you. Your best is always good enough. You are the owners of the business. You are working for that business. You are doing what you do because you gave your best and you continue to give your best. And that's what you've got to believe. So you've got to, you can tune out of that inner voice, that inner critical voice. You know, we tune out of things all the time. If we, if we turn down a radio, it's still there. It's still there, but we just tuned out. It's just, it's just gone down. You know, if we it's turn the light like, out in a room, the furniture's all still there. We just can't see it. We've tuned out. It's like when I used to, you know, see some clients, and I still see some now and again. It's like, if you write down or listen to how you speak to yourself, would you speak to your best friend like it? Yes, that's what I say. You yeah. know, and they're like, Jesus, no way. You know, like, why are you speaking to yourself like it? Yeah. And you only believe that certain stuff about yourself because of what's been imposed on you by other people. Oh, yeah. It's not yeah. even about who, you, it's not who you are, you know? Uh, no. <clears throat> you know, when you're born, you, you're a blank canvas, aren't you? Yeah. The yeah. other thing that I do, which, has been it's, a, it's been a game changer for me it's, it's it's what's called negative memory release because of these memories where something has happened so if you did have the job from hell in your cases you know paint spills rips and everything else that is going to live for a long time because every time you go to price a job you go oh what if they contact them or whatever and you feel either what you know the emotion that comes up when you think about it is worry or Anger, uh, maybe anger at the person, maybe anger at, you know, your team that did it, doesn't matter. But you need to let that go. And I got into this because my son was in the army and he came back on leave at one point and he had changed. He had got a bit of PTSD. He was coming towards the end and he, for intention, he was going to join up for another four, but he said, Dad, I don't, it, I don't want to, but he wouldn't let me know why. So I learned this skill, which is basically IEMT, which is integrated eye movement therapy. But to let you know what it does, when you think about something, whether it's a past job, whether it's the, the row with the, you know, your partner or whatever, your brain very quickly makes a picture and it gives it to you in a split second. Ah, oh, that's what you're thinking about. And what I can do out of trance by using different eye movements and going moving my finger across different axes, I can get your brain to drop pieces of that picture. It's like a puzzle, like nicking the corner pieces out and then taking the center pieces out. And if you take enough pieces out, you can't, it's physically possible to feel that emotion. And sometimes you do just need to let that go. And it could be related to what you do. It could be totally unrelated, but every now and again, it's going to come back and haunt you. So if you need to do that, there is a way that you can let that image. Let me, and then it doesn't matter if you were to see it on a TV film or show, you know, you would relate, you could go, oh, yeah, I remember that. But you wouldn't feel any emotion. You're not suddenly reliving that that moment again. I'll tell you what, John, just you saying about it. And I know <clears throat> what you've developed. You can do it in two sessions, can't you? But yeah. when I was training years ago, one of the tutors done something similar, you know, eye movement. Yeah. Funny enough, I remember it now. It was about a client that hadn't paid or there was some problem with a job. It was decorating related. 
So on our lunch break, you know, he was doing all this. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, right, just focus on my finger. And he said, keep, try and remember it, try and remember it. And literally, (laughs) very, very quickly, he's like, okay, how do you feel about it now? And I felt like my brain was going ding, 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 ding. It scrambled my brain so much and I just started laughing and it had gone. You can't find it, yeah. Craziest thing I've ever experienced. And that's what really got me hooked when, you know, I was training and, you know, subsequent training I've done with you and, um, you know, Matt Gilbert stuff and that. But, um, yeah, it's amazing. It's, it is. I mean, you know, it, our brain is a brilliant tool, but when it realises that someone outside of it wants to help and help that person, it will give all the help it can. But like you said, you know, talking to yourself as if you're your best friend, it all does start with us. You have got to believe in yourself. Don't let the people that perhaps brought you down. Don't let if you was, you know, if you've got apprentices and they're in a bad way because they were bullied at school they're still being bullied those bullies are still living in their head rent free yeah. they've got to let them go and you've got to say to them you know don't, just don't praise them give people praise let them know that yep yeah, yeah, you're doing a good job if they if they need to do that a little bit better that is fantastic that is brilliant i tell you what can we go for let's go that little bit further and let's do that bit tomorrow as well duh, 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 let's do it quicker it is the way that we speak to ourselves the way we speak to others we got to speak to others the way we would be expected to speak to. But like you say, absolutely, we are our own best friends. If you think about it, that person that you see in a mirror every morning, every night, they've been by your side always, through thick and thin. And I, I do something stupid. And I, when I first read it, I thought, that's mad. But I'll tell you, it, it makes me, still makes me smile because I high five myself in my mirror of a morning. Because I go, you know, I do, I do, do a, you know, a few uh, affirmations and uh, because it, they, they work for me and they, that's fine. And I look in that mirror and I go, do you know what? I'm going to have a good day today. I'm going to see a few clients, blah, 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 blah. And you're by my side. Cheers for that. Bang. It's a couple of seconds. And yeah, but it still makes me sad because I'm stupid doing it. But it doesn't matter because it makes me, you know, walk out of my bathroom and I feel better. Yeah. That's please. the key. You know, and it's, it does with anything. You know, if you think about it, if you get out of the bed and you, you've got kids and you stand on a Lego brick, oh, that bloody hurts. And then suddenly you go downstairs and you're in a mood because who left that Lego brick? Or, you know, the kids will look down, oh, dad's in a bad mood or mum's in a bad mood. Blah, blah, blah. Whereas if you get out and you're smiling, you're happy. They look up, dad, oh, dad's happy. They smile. And that is the same with your clients. If you walk up to that door, blah, 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 you know, yeah, smiling away, you know. Brilliant, John. It is. It starts with us, all yeah. the way. Hundred percent, John. Martin, do you do you have any um, questions at all? Um, my biggest problem I have is overthinking and anxiety when I'm about to make a phone call uh, or go to a client's house, knocking on the door. I get real problems with my stomach, and I just wondered what technique you would think about using for that would that be a similar sort of thing with the finger very much so but you've got to think why why do I feel like especially phone call let's go back to phone would I be right in thinking that at some point you did make a phone call to do with your work and you either got a mouthful of abuse or you screwed up or or whatever and you as you're dialing that number you are reliving that moment I think it was people in the background listening to me making the phone call and criticising what I had said on the phone that right. upsets me. OK, so it was someone else's opinion of you that yeah. you let them get inside your head. And now it, it's still even today, it's still having an effect on you because then they made you feel as if you wasn't doing it right or whatever. Correct. Yes. So you you've got to let that go. You. I've got to go, do you know what? I am me. This is me. I don't care what other people think. Because we don't. We've we've all got to be different. If people have got opinions of you, that's their opinion. That's their problem. It's not your problem. You have to let that go. You know, I mean, I am, I'm boarding, I'm, I'm five foot, four five 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 three actually i think i'm shrinking now (laughs) i do not let it bother me i do not have a problem 
I got into hypnotherapy because I had a tremendous amount of illness in my 30s and everything else. And I turned my whole life around because I changed my mindset. You, my, you don't let anybody live rent free. Are you good at your job? Yes, I think so. Again, no, don't, don't say I, think. Don't, don't say think. Yes, you're right. I am. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you are. Yes. Okay. How many jobs have you done when you've knocked on that door and you've done a brilliant job and it's gone really, really well? Uh, all of them. All of them. Pretty, pretty much all of them. Yeah. Pretty much all of them. Because you know, I've, I've met you for the first time tonight, and you come across as a nice guy, and I'm thinking, yeah, if he can do what he's going to say he's going to do, I'm going to employ him. So, what are you worried about? The people that have put you down, yes, you might have competitors put you down. They're going to put you down because they want that job. Then they're, they're nasty pieces of work. You know, that, that's how they operate. You don't. You go in and you go, I'm, I'm good at my job. I can do what I need to do. Those people that put you down. So was you in some sort of call centre then or something on that job? No, no, just just a, on a job. Just on a just normal on job. job. With just, just colleagues in the background. Oh, right. Yeah. So... so it may be that those colleagues, I think, you know, if he gets that job, oh, he's, he's going to get, you know, he's, he's going to have a, have a good job there. He's going to get um, big money out of that. So they start putting you down because they're jealous. They could be putting you down because that's their humour and it's not particularly funny, but they don't realise how it's affecting you. The bottom line is don't let them get in your head. Don't let them get in your head. Let that go. Have you got a hobby? Yes. Um, I say jogging and walking the dogs, pretty much. We've got a, we've got a lot of dogs. We've got seven dogs at the moment. So <laughs> look, looking after dogs is, is a big hobby of ours. Good, good. So what, you, what you've, got, you've got to think of, right, is... so. I don't know if you can, you, you do it so much nowadays, but years ago, I was brought up on the, the edge of Epping Forest and you could just take your dogs over there, let them off the lead and you just let them run. I don't know if you can do that so much nowadays because of all the snowflakes out there, to be honest, but, <laughs> but you could picture that, yeah? yeah? So what I want you to do is, you know that there is people, there's voices and there's faces that are holding you back that are, Living in your mind, went for and they don't need to be there. Because some of that mostly happened years ago and it's still affecting you now, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. So just tonight, when you lay on your bed, or in your dog bed behind you, whatever you're going to do, <laughs> <laughs> just imagine going out with those dogs that you really love to bits and everything else, but each one of them, is either the stupid idiot who started having a go at you on the phone or ex whatever. You know, you can even imagine that they've got collars on with the word, whatever, you know, the anxiety and whatever, and let them run. Let them go. Just let them run. See them run. Visualise them running. And as you go, just imagine, even if they're on the lead, yeah, perhaps you've got one of those leads that extends as you go. Just imagine your anxiety, your worries going down that lead and out, out of them. They're just letting, they're running it all out because when they come back to you, they're, all they're coming back to you with is love and affection, not the anxiety, not the way. But you have got to tell your mind, I don't want to feel that. If you're a golfer, you can, you know, you can say you can take it out of, uh, you know, with your clubs. You've got to make it about you. It's working with you. That anxiety that you're feeling you are turning up with my anxiety clients i always take them to what's called the control room because you can turn everything down you know anxiety we all have to have a little bit but we don't need it quite as much as what we allow it to build up in ourselves so if you imagine if you shut your eyes and you imagine that Actually, well, let's, let's, let's try it as it's, as it's a nice thing. Sorry for everyone else who's watching this on replay. You can still do it, but I'm going to work with Martin now. What is, is there an incident? You don't, have to say, you don't have to say it in this group. You don't have to say it out loud at all. But is there something that if you was to think about it now that makes you anxious, automatically changes your, you know, your body language and everything? 
Is there something that you could think of? No, not offhand. No. Not offhand. So yours is when you are put into a situation. A situation when I need to speak, yes. When you need to speak. Hmm. So you, you tonight, you've come on here, you're speaking to me lovely and clearly and everything else. And I'm hearing every word you're saying and it's, it's absolutely no problem. You speak to Gary, you know, we, you didn't know Gary. I know you're in the group, but we you'd never met before and you're speaking. Was you a bit anxious before you come on? Of course, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so are your dogs? They're the dogs, yeah. <laughs> Just been let out in the garden. Yeah, so <laughs> what you've got to think of, you know, you're going to go, well, what was I anxious about? This, this, is, this is great. There's nothing, you know, you was worrying about, oh, what other thing, you know, what, again? what if they can't understand me? Yeah, we can understand you. What if I speak too fast? Doesn't matter. If you speak too fast, we'll say, oh, can you slow it down? Doesn't matter. You was worrying about the what ifs. So you'd have to change that what if, okay? Yeah. But if there are times, if you, let's, let's just say that you've got to make an important call, a job that you really want that's going to put the food on the table, pay the bills and everything else. When you get that phone in your hand, is that when the anxiety kicks in? Uh, yes, a bit before that as well. Okay. Thinking about what, the rehearsing in my head of what I'm going to say, you know, the, the, the speeches I'm going to... Right. So you could sit there and rehearse what you're going to say, and then they could just suddenly throw something in, and then suddenly all what you've rehearsed just goes right out the window, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Always happens, yeah. Yeah, so done. You know <laughs> your stuff. You know what you need to do. You need to know that you need to let them know that you are more than capable of doing it, and that's going to be the price or whatever you're doing on that phone. So don't over, don't start thinking because otherwise, as soon as it goes off track, you panic, and then you go so like, oh, uh, uh, and then you start hesitating. They're going to pick up on that. Oh, he's not very confident, is he? Mm. So you just go with it. You know what it is. It's that job. It's that's the price, blah, 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 blah. And that's what I want to do, you know, and there's a list of if they want to see how the work, however you work. But don't go over it in your head because you don't know what they're going to say or do. You've just got to be confident. So what you can do is when you pick up that phone, you've got to get out of that habit of going over in your mind, over in your mind, what you're going to do. You just pick up that phone. But before you dial that number, just use your imagination. Because our imagination is, remember, like I said before, your brain doesn't know what is true and what is not. But if you're sitting there, let's say you're sitting at a desk or whatever, I want you just to imagine that there is a dial in front of you, like a volume control. And it's going to go from one to 10. I want you to imagine just turning that volume, just as you're going to make that call, I'm going to turn that, that anxiety, because it's got the words anxiety written across it. And you're going to turn it down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. I'm going to go even calmer than that. I'm going to go to 3. Should we go down 2? I'm not going to turn it off because we all need a bit of anxiety. I'm going to leave it on 1 or 2, whatever suits me. And you're turning it. And when you turn it down, you'll hear it. You'll, you can even imagine clicking it down. And it goes down to 2. You take a breath and then you make that call. Because you know you are good at what you do. You know that this is your business and you are going to be able to provide whatever that client wants. doesn't matter how many times you rehearse what you're going to say on that phone. Because if they suddenly go, oh, I've only got a couple of minutes in the end, you know, so just tell me what the price is. And it's going to throw you. If you start hesitation, if you start going, oh, um, uh, they're going to go, oh, well, no. Bang. Thank you have got to take control of that situation. That dial, it doesn't have to be anxiety, it could be fear, it could be worry. But if you think about it, the things that you have thought about, the things that you've worried about, if they were your problems, you find that solution. If they weren't your problems, don't worry about it. When you're, if, if you happen to receive a complaint from a customer, that's their problem. You can sort it, you will do it, but that is their problem. You don't overthink it because by the time you get to that job the following morning, you know, you've got the wallpaper coming off the walls or the paint coming off or the bricks falling out or whatever. You've over you've overthought it. No point because you don't know what you're walking. So you've got to let it go. Don't let those thoughts. 
So what's interesting as well, Martin, like you've come across brilliantly. You know, I would never, ever guess that you were worried or anxious about coming on here. Thank you. And it's kind of like, you know, just from what we've been speaking about, it's purely just an unconscious program from when, you know, those guys were overhearing what you were saying on the phone, taking the mickey or whatever. Mm. You've just, you've in this split second, you've just gone boom, straight back to that moment in time. And none of it's true. You know, it just relates to an unconscious program. Fight or flights kicked in. You felt uncomfortable. And it's like, right, we need to get out of here. Let's not go on the phone again because, you know, yeah. And your body is going to give you those sensations not to go on it. But like John said, you know, you know, it's not true. You know, it's just an unconscious program. You can imagine it. You can dial it down mm. and knowing but you are good at what you do. And like I say, it is all in our heads because yeah. you've come across brilliantly. Thank you. And the thing is, these days, it's quite easy just to send a text, isn't it? So it's, it's an easy way out of not having to phone and speak to people. Yeah. It's you know. People by people. You are not, you know, if, as I say, you know, if you were to come to my door, yeah, I'd be ha quite happy to invite you in and everything else. A text, they're all going to receive the text. All they want to see is the price in that and everything else and when you're available and that. They're not seeing you. You've got to sell you and you sell yourself, mm. yourself tonight brilliantly. So you just do that okay. all the time. That's it. You know, change so, change those voices, change those negative voices into I'll, positive voices. I will give it a go. Think back of all the things that you have done, all the jobs that you are really proud of, what you've achieved in your life, even not just relating to work, all the things that you've achieved, and you've achieved them with those voices in your head. So think what you can achieve without them. And those instead of being negative voices, they're actually positive voices. Your voice going, yeah, you've got this. Every challenge now, you don't look at it as oh. I don't know if I can do this. Am I good enough? And everything else. Every time, you know, each job you go to, if you have got a little bit of, you know, nerves or a bit of anxiety, just tell yourself, I can do this. No problem. Because you tell yourself that and I tell you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. And you can do it. You will do it. Yeah. And like you said, like you do, John, you know, your um, habits, what you do, your high five in the morning, you know, yeah. You know, it makes you laugh, but I'll tell you what, it does work because you're does. You're saying to yourself, I really like myself, you know, listen to the words you're saying about yourself. Yeah. Always, you know, big yourself up, you know, and be nice to yourself and your life will change just just by doing that alone, you know. Without a doubt. One of, when, I, when I did do my training years ago, I got into it, as I say, because in my 30s, 32, I woke, 32, I woke up feeling absolutely fine i walked into my bathroom to have a shave i dropped down i had a cardiac arrest i had i had no heart conditions or anything and everything. i got over that i then had a stroke okay as i was 34 36 i had another heart attack cardiac arrest again 38 i had another stroke and i've got metal shoulders so i'm actually 80 percent upper body disabled because i wore them out as a drummer and I got to the stage where I suddenly thought, right, is this my life? Do I just sit on a sofa and claim benefits and watch crap daytime TV? Or do I do something about it? And back then, it was the old Paul McKenna videos that I used to use. And it got me out of it. So I then done, I was intrigued as to why it, it didn't only get me through it, it got me beyond where I wanted to be. Because I'd lost my mojo, my confidence and everything. And it got me back. So then I, I was a teacher at that time and I fell out of love with education. So I love kids to be kids and I just too much pressure, test after test. So I went and done my practitioner's course and I loved it. Found out I could do it and I really loved it. But when I went there, I had to do a few days in college and we had to all stand up. Guy walked into the room. It was a strange guy because it was one of these, well, I'll say people by people because you looked at him, he was a really scrappy sod. But as soon as you saw his face, his smile, you thought, I like you. There was something about him. And he just asked to stand up, why did we want to do that? And I just told him my story, my backstory. And he went along the line and he came back to me and he goes, do you take tablets now? And I went, yeah, I went from zero and I'm on 16 a day. So he said, tell me what you do when you take your tablets. And I thought, well, that's a bit odd, but yeah, okay. I said, well, I'll come down in the morning. I said, like, I flick the kettle. I said, I do my tablets on a Sunday night already for the week. So I said, so I pour them in my hand. I said, I look at them to make sure I haven't dropped any. 
I said, I get a glass of water and I take my tablets. And he went, yeah. He said, and when you look at those tablets, for that split second, you are reminding yourself how ill you were. You're hearing every beep and dot of that machine. You're feeling every tube that was in you just for that split second. He said, what I want you to do from today, morning and night, in your head, if people are there, he said, or out loud, if you're on your own, he said, do what you need to do. He said, you know, your routine is good. But when you look at your tablets, just say to yourself, today's going to be a good day. And you're telling your mind it's going to be a good day because I'm taking these tablets and I'm still here. And again, it's one of those things that I've done religiously. And it still makes me laugh because he was right. Because I don't, didn't realise that I was recalling that. But thinking about it, yeah, I most probably was. Mm. You know, and now I'm telling myself I'd, I've had a good day if I take them overnight or it's going to be a good day of a morning. It just changes my focus, my mindset. And that is what it's all about, just changing that mindset. You guys all know that you are good at what you've done. You know, if you're, you're in business, we've just come through a hell of a, a two and a half years of absolutely unknown. So now you deserve to go on and get better and bigger and be proud of what you've achieved. Don't let the idiots that have brought you down or the ones that are in your head that have put you down, even perhaps when you was an apprentice and was learning your skill, You've come through that. That was all in the past. You've got to go forward. John, that's brilliant. Martin, you got any more questions? No, that's, that's fine. Thank you very much. I know Beverly's been listening in and we've been talking on chat a little bit, but um, uh, unless you want to ask, come on, Beverly. Um, we can speak as well out of out of um, Zoom session here. But um, no, John, I mean, you know, when I put... Um, a message out in a few groups I'm in, you know, hypnotherapy groups. And um, you said, you know, you'd, you'd do a talk. You were the first one I picked, you know, because uh, we spoke quite a bit over the last few years and you're just so brilliant at what you do. And I know the people that are going to be listening after what a lift it's going to give them. And it just makes you feel really, really good, you know. And hypnotherapy is not woo-woo crap, you know. <laughs> It's nothing, it's nothing, hypnotherapy, it's not, nothing to do with hypnotherapy, no. you know, like the word itself. It's just what you can do and understand in your mind and how you can yeah. change and how you can change quickly as well. You know, you yeah. don't have to be suffering and going to talk in therapy for years on end, you know? You don't want to, you don't want to talk about it. You don't want to leave it. You want to let go of it and you want to move on. But Absolutely. it does all start with you, you know, and even, you know, with, with, with what you were, what we were saying there, you know, Talking is so important. And if you think about it, you know, you're all good tradesmen. That first impression that you give that, that client, you know, when you talk and you're one of, you know, if and I, I said it to the other night, you know, if, if, I, if I have a client come here, if they're really posh, I can be really posh. If they come in and F and blind, I will F and blind. That's what they want to hear. That's what they want to be. But they want to just hear what, you know, Oh, yeah, I could trust him because usually they're gonna, you're going to be in their homes, their wife's going to go out shopping, or they want to go it safe and everything else. They're not going to get that in a text. Yeah. They're going to want to meet that person. You sell yourself and you believe in yourself. Yeah. Right, John. Honestly, I appreciate it so much. I know you're chocker busy, but um, well, I appreciate your, your time to come on and um, Beverly and Martin as well. Uh, it's great to see you. Hi, Beverly. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's come on. All right, Beverly. Oh, yeah, yeah, she has. But appreciate you um, coming on, Beverly. And Martin, like I say, you come across so brilliantly. you got no worries whatsoever. Just onwards and upwards from here. And, yeah. um, Thank you, Gary. Yeah. You can um, Definitely. You know, create yeah. a business you want. Yeah, just believe, believe in yourself. You know you're good at it. And after what we've been through, you all deserve it. So, uh, yeah, good luck. Right. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. All right. You take care. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.